Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Iron Diaper, which is your irregular, regular, well, completely irregular Gundam news show, which comes out every time there is some news. So, just in case you haven't seen it in the recent videos, we now have a 10% coupon for Hobby Link Japan, so anything that you do see in this video that is not premium Bandai, you can get over there. 10% off. So the links are down there in the description. And as for where I get all the news, it's always from Twitter and the Bandai hobby site itself. So it is news from the horse's mouth at Bandai themselves. So let's not waste any time, let's dive right in. So the first thing right here on Twitter, of course, is the high-grade Gundam 00 Gundam Pluton. This was announced just yesterday, so this is the newest, juiciest bit of news that we have. And once again, this is a P Bandai kit, so it might be a little harder to come by. So moving right on over to the Premium Bandai website, here is the page for the Gundam Pluton. So we can see if you could pre-order this, the actual Japanese retail price is 2,420 yen, which is not that bad at all. This will be coming out in September. This came out hot on the tail of the release of the Master Grade Kyrios, which is kind of interesting. The Pluton, which you're seeing right here, is the precursor to Gundam Nadle. Gundam Nadle is what's inside of Gundam Virtue. I'll pop up a scene right now, just in case you're not entirely familiar with Gundam 00. Basically, it's a really awesome looking Gundam inside a Gundam, and it's got pink dreadlocks. Or red dreadlocks. Whatever color, they are awesome. It's one of my all-time favorite Gundam 00 designs, so hopefully the high-grade Pluton right here, which looks pretty cool, is another subtle hint that we will be getting a Master Grade Virtue, but at this point, I think it's a given. So if we scroll on down to the blurb down here, there's a whole bunch of information about the High Grade Pluton, so I'll just read out what that says while we show some awesome images up on the screen. So first up, we got some info on the head. It's saying that it is basically inheriting the design of the O Gundam from Gundam 00. So that means it has that traditional Gundam head. So if you dig that kind of old school Gundam head design, this might be a 00 kit for you. Next up, there seems to be a pretty awesome design to the chest on this here. So this has something very similar once again to a classic Gundam. It has a kind of almost core block system going on in here. So we have something akin to a core fighter, which has the GN drive installed into it. So according to this, it can be removed. Again, impressive for a high grade. Hold on, what it says is some of the parts can be removed, so I'm not sure if you can actually take the entire core block system thing out or not, or if it is just an extra part for displaying on the side. I'm not quite sure about that right there. We've got some info on the arms, apparently has some opening parts on there, you can see them in that image. And we also have a set of widespread open hands. Pretty cool. The GN verniers that we're seeing on the waist and the shoulders, those little thruster segments, those are apparently molded in yellow, so no stickers. The wires that lead from the GN drive to the GN condensers that you're seeing around there on the back, those are made out of a soft rubbery material so they won't get in the way of posing. And it's something similar to what we would have seen in the 1100 no grade versions of the old Gundam 00 kits. Back to this image right here, and apparently we've got some moving parts in the knees, including a storage area for the beam saber handle. That is pretty cool. And the next thing it does mention here is, going back to what I just said, the core block system cannot be removed. It's just parts from the front and back of the torso, which can be attached to that little segment you can see right there in the back beside the shield. So that cannot be removed from the actual body. It's a separate piece entirely. Lastly then, the shield there, that is molded in red, white, and gray, so... So from what I'm seeing so far, this looks like quite a spicy little kit. Moving on. So moving back in time on their Twitter timeline to see what else they announced, we've got a bunch of Gundam Wing announcements. So much so that Gundam Wing has its own dedicated page over here on the Bandai Hobby site. Once again, I will put all the links to these websites down there in the description if you do want to check them out yourself. So here is the news lineup of what will be coming out. These are the newer announcements. And what we got, of course, is the controversial Verka release, which is the Master Grade 1100 Gundam Wing Zero EW Verka. Next up, we've got a awesome looking classic version of Gundam Heavy Arms. This, of course, is a high grade. Both of those are full releases. And as for the premium Bandai announcements, we've got the high grade Gundam Geminis Assault Booster Unit. And something else there that I totally can't read. Too much kanji. But yeah, this is kind of looking like it is the high grade answer to what the Bandai Hobby site is doing with the Gundam F91. As in, Gundam sold separately, all the extra parts will come at a later date. The other announcement we got, of course, is the Master Grade Gundam Sandrock EW 
armadillo. So let's take a quick look at each of those one by one. So first up is this. A lot of you guys I saw online are not so happy with this release right here. This, of course, once again, is the Endless Waltz version of the Wing Gundam Zero. That is the one with the big angel wings. Probably one of the most iconic Gundams ever, and that's why Bandai tends to keep rehashing it. As you can see on this page here, there is no information about the kit whatsoever yet. From that diagram right there, it looks very similar to the Master Grade, I nearly said. It is the Master Grade to the real grade kit. Actually, it does look very similar to the Master Grade kit. I hope it's better. But anyway, it's going to be 6,050 yen coming out this November. A lot of you guys wanted to know what I think about this, and I'm super happy about it. This was my first ever Gunpla ever, the Master Grade Wing Zero EW. So hopefully this is better than both the classic Master Grade Wing Zero and what we got with the high resolution. Neither of those kits are particularly perfect. So hopefully this one will be amazing. So next up then, and once again, this is something we could totally see coming. That is the high grade variant of the Gundam Heavy Arms. So this is the classic anime style. It's got that gun arm, which I absolutely adore. That little knife round on the side of the arm. And if this is on par with what we saw with the high grade Sandrock, then this is going to be fantastic. Heavy Arms is one of those designs, kind of like Wing Zero, that is so classic. So unique and so awesome. There isn't really much to say here. It's got those opening hatches on the shoulders and legs. You can mount that Gatling on its back when it's not in use. And it's out in October at 1,650 yen, which is not so bad. So next up with the wing announcements, this of course is the Gundam Geminis once again. Of course, there is no kit involved. This is a couple of additional packs for using with the Geminis that came out last month. This, of course, once again, sadly is P. Bandai. And what is included in this kit is what you're seeing right now. And these are some awesome designs right here. So this is what both of those will look like when attached to the Gundam Geminis. And this is the Assault Booster and the High Mobility Unit. Both of which have very similar parts in common. As you can see, those leg thrusters are pretty much identical besides the color on both. The backpack is quite similar, but still different. And from what I'm seeing right here in this image, it looks like you can attach all the parts on at once for this absolute behemoth of a kit right here. This is one to keep an eye on. This looks cool. Last up then in the announcements was this variant of the Master Grade Katoki variant of Gundam Sandrock, this time with the Armadillo armor on. So this is really cool looking. Once again, this is just an image so far. There is no actual CG images of the kit or any actual images of the kit, but we know what the Sandrock looks like. We know the quality to expect from these kits, these premium Bandai variants of the wing Katoki kit, so I assume this will be as awesome as all of them have been so far, but there's not much to talk about, not much to go on here, so moving on. So the last of the truly big announcements is this right here. Once again, this is a full retail release, and this is a variant of the Gundam Astray No Name from Gundam Build Divers. So this kit right here we should have seen coming. This is a fully symmetrical variant of the Gundam Astray No Name. It doesn't have a full name it doesn't have a full name just yet. Apparently, it is going to appear in Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise, and if it has appeared already, I apologize about that. I am not up to date with the anime. But so far, this is looking pretty cool. The Estray No Name did have some issues. It wasn't the most color accurate kit ever, but this one right here is looking pretty cool. So it isn't a missing an arm this time. It does have that same sort of beam saber type thing it did have before, but that is now on an arm attachment. There is no denying that it looks absolutely sick awesome. This is one edgy Gundam right here. But I am a bit iffy on how that kind of armored poncho is going to turn out because the no-name rifle from last time was a little bit not so awesome. But I guess we'll see when it comes out in October 2020, and this will put you back 2,200 yen, which is a little bit pricey for a high-grade kit. So that is it mainly for the news. What we're going to do now is just bust on through the Bandai Hobby site to see what kits are coming up in the near future from this month all the way to November. So we'll do this pretty quickly. So apparently there is a Tokyo 2020 Olympics version of the high-grade Gundam. I'm not necessarily sure which version of the high-grade Oryx 78 2 this is, but this apparently came out already. I'm not sure where you can actually get this. It may be Japan only. But what there is is the blue version for the 2020 Olympics, which I'm not even sure if it's going ahead or not. And the red version for the 2020, or should I say Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games. 
And if that is not enough for you, there also is the Tokyo 2020 Olympics Haro and the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games Haro in red. Once again, no idea where you can get those guys. Next up, and this also came out last Friday, this is the high grade 144th scale RX-78 II Gundam Beyond Global. And I don't know what it is with me and I forgot to pre-order this. Once again, I forgot to pre-order Gundam The Origin and I forgot to pre-order this and I've never reviewed the revived version of the RX-78 II. What is wrong with me? I need to make a video of all three of them at some point in the future because this is just blah. Anyway, moving on. So as for this week's releases, which is Saturday the 13th of June, we've got a whole bunch of 30 minute missions kits. First off right here we've got the flight type alto, we've seen this once before in a dark navy blue. This is an orange, white and black variant, costing 1980 yen, is out on the 13th. Next up, and this one I am so, so excited for, this is the, well, new variant of the Porta Nova is the best way to put it. So in green, this is the Ciel Nova, and this thing looks awesome. So if you're kind of sick of building the current 30 minute missions kits, sometimes it's nice to add something a little bit different in, especially if you like to harvest the parts for building something unique. So this is a base kit, so it means it's a little bit cheaper than the sort of expansion kit. So this will cost you 1,518 yen, and this, once again, is out this week. And if you don't like the green, it's also coming out in a dark navy blue. This thing's proportions are weird. Weird in a cool way. It's got those big chunky legs, and next to non-existent waist, and long alien arms. Once again, if you have not tried out these kits, you have to. They are awesome. Next up then we've got a bunch of different armor sets coming out. Well, two of them to be precise. First up we've got this definitely Shah Aznavel approved looking set of armor right here with that big old Zaku commander horn looking part blown completely out of proportion. And speaking of out of proportion, that hand looks awesome. So if your CL Nova didn't look dark and evil enough already, this will definitely add to that menacing aesthetic. This will cost 440 yen, once again, out this week. Next up is a variant of that armor in grey. It's all pretty much the same except for the head and shoulders now have a more of a flight knight kind of vibe about it. Once again, looking pretty cool and costs exactly the same as the other variant. We also have an SD kit coming out and coming from Gundam Bill Divers Rerise. This is a variant of the Volkelander we would have seen a few months back. This is the X Volkylander. So it seems quite similar in a lot of ways, just kind of some parts changes. A more typical Gundam color scheme and it's got a whole lot of gold going on. There isn't much info on this. It says it comes with a sword, a shield and some foil stickers, but either way it looks like pretty much what we would have seen before. This will be retailing at 1,430 yen. So coming this month on the 20th, we do have a little bit of a dry patch when it comes to Gunpla. There is one SD kit, we've got some Fates Day Night, we've got some Sakura Wars, and we've got some Evangelion. So I'm just going to talk about the real grade here because it's the most interesting thing out of the bunch. So on Saturday the 20th of this month, we're going to be getting the real grade version of Ava Unit Zero. That of course is Rei Ayanami's variant of the Ava. So if you haven't seen my review of the real grade Unit 1, the best way for me to sum it up is it is absolutely awesome. A masterpiece, just like I said, but it does have a pair of somewhat loose upper arms. Besides that though, it is perfection. So as for Ava Unit Zero here, there's two different versions of it available. Of course, there's the standard variant, which is just AV Unit Zero itself in orange with that pallet rifle. There's probably some knives and hands and other stuff in here, but it does not show it in the pictures. But down here in the blurb, it does say it comes with two progressive knives, one pallet rifle, hand parts by seven, the umbilical cable, and the realistic decals. The other version available, of course, is the DX set, quite a bit more expensive at 7,150 yen, but this comes with quite a bit. So the biggest, juiciest extra in this box that separates it from the standard one, of course, is the big old Positron rifle right here. There we have a pretty awesome image of Ava Unit 1 getting ready to take a shot. And we also have this little gizmo in here as well, which is a part for using on Ava Unit 1. Basically that thing up there on the shoulder. So now moving on to the last batch of releases for this month. Once again, we've got a bunch of 30 minute missions parts. That is this kind of, I guess like, city in the distance sort of base. There's an example of what it would be look like used with a kit. So I guess if you paint this up well, take a shot from above, 
What you'll get is something like this right here, which looks like it is in flight above a cityscape. Next up then we've got a bunch of effect parts. These look pretty cool. They come in blue and yellow. And there's a quick example of what they look like used in a bit of a diorama. The effect sets will cost you 550 yen and that micro city base will cost you 440. Next up then we've got a bunch of high grade build divers re-rise kits. So basically these are some new Gundam style weapons and armor for using with the Alice Core Gundam but of course usually with these parts you can use them with the standard Core Gundam as well. The weapon in the wing will cost you 770 and as for the armor DLC that will cost you 935 yen. The last of the Gundam Build Divers re-rise releases for June then of course is the high grade Build Divers or Wadham Pod. So now jumping through July pretty quickly. So from July, August, September, October and November I'm going to be going through them quite quickly. That's because there is no specific release dates just yet and just in case you want to get any pre-orders in, aren't aware of some of these or something like that, let's rush through them all pretty quickly. So first up in July we get what is essentially like a revive variant of the Sharzaku. This of course is to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Gunpla, so this is almost like a revive of the Sharzaku 2. It looks like it's rocking some cool articulation, some cool gimmicks, and this is one I am super looking forward to. This will cost you 1760 yen. Next up in July then we've got the high grade Mesa, and this of course is from Hathaway's Flash. This is one big bulky behemoth of a Xeon suit and this is pretty awesome. It looks like it might be rocking some interesting tech especially in the torso there so once again this is definitely one to keep an eye out for if you really love your universal century. This will put you back about 2750 yen. Moving now into the Gundam Build Divers re-rise releases for July we have the Gundam Tri-Age Magnum. It's kind of like the Gundam Age 2 Magnum just bulked up big awesome and there is no extra information or images of this just yet just the CG imager scene right here and this will cost 2200 yen. As for other re-rise releases of course there is the last set of armor for the core Gundam. This doesn't have a name just yet but it's the Neptune 8 version so that's like Nept or Nep 8 or Nep Nep or something to that effect. Of course you do get the planet booster and the armor. It will look like this when attached onto the core Gundam 2 sold separately with the Revan Gundam and the weapons on the back there those are sold separately too. So the armor itself is 990 yen. The weapons right here those are 770 yen and once again July. As for the last of the Gunpla in July we get a twin pack of cross silhouette kits. Once again this is to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Gunpla. We get a Sharzaku 2 and the classic Granddaddy Gundam. 1980 yen. Moving now into the 30 minute missions kits and what we'll get is this ride on tank. I shit you not, it's a tank for your Alto to ride on. Of course with 30 minute missions there's more freedom than Gunpla so you can do whatever you want with this. It separates into a multitude of parts so at 858 yen this is a pretty cool little option set and speaking of cool option sets next is the Rabiot option set. So this goes with the Rabiot's weapons just like we would have seen with the option sets that came out before. We get a chainsaw in here, a sword, a kunai, what is not to love? We also get a variant of a 30 minute missions torso. This of course is in grey so it will look like this when unpainted. There it is on a Portanova. There it is on a Rabiot so it looks pretty cool. Lastly then we've got a colour variant of that knight armour and a colour variant of that Zaku commander looking armour with that big old hand. As for July's premium Bandai kits, there is an overview of the five kits that will be coming out. And that of course is the high grade Death Beast that is from G Gundam. The killer looking master grade Gundam F92 I-Type. So this is the first spin-off F90 kit that's an entire kit. So that's the F92 that you're seeing there as well as the I-Type equipment. There's a lot in this box. Next up yet another Reborn 100 version of the Gun Easy, this time in blue. This crazy version of the high grade or Jaja, this time from Twilight Axis in white, pink and purple. That is a naughty looking Gundam right there. And finally then is the real grade Sinanju special coding version and you can special code a turret but it's still a turret. Unless they've updated it in some way, I don't know if they have. Either way. It's shiny, it's Sinanju, it looks awesome, but if it's the same as the way I saw it before, well, uh, 
You know what I think about that. So now blazing right on through August, here's a bit of an overview. As for Gunpla, finally we're getting the high grade Hajiro Boshi. Looking pretty cool, hopefully not as big and bulky as Marchosius, but something tells me that it won't. Mainly the lack of armor. Anyway, at 1,650 yen, this is one I am super excited about. As for those August Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise releases, first off we've got the Gundam Aegis Knight. Of course this is the follow up to the Justice Knight, this time it's based on Gundam Aegis from Gundam Seed. I'm gonna assume this is a pretty big kit because it comes at a pretty hefty price of 2530 yen. It looks cool so far, it's gonna be a little hard to tell from the images here as to how color accurate this is but it looks pretty good. If it's anything like the Justice Knight this should be impressive and honestly I'm not sure if there is a high grade Gundam Aegis out there that this is based on or we're gonna see what we saw with the Justice Knight and the Infinite Justice and that we'll be seeing a brand new Gundam Aegis coming out sometime in the future. So another month and we've got another core Gundam, this time in red and extremely over the top. We've seen this guy before so I'm not gonna waste too much time on this. This will be another hefty 2200 yen, looks awesome, red core Gundam and I can't wait. Once again, some more equipment for the core Gundam that we've seen before. This is the Aun Rize armor coming in at 935 yen. Next up in the August Gunpla releases, we've got another Haropla kit. This is the Haropla Haro Fitter. We're getting some more 30 minute missions. This here, of course, is the ground type Alto once again, just in a different color, which is olive drab. Another variant of the Ride On Tank. This is 858 yen and it's in a, what it says is brown, but it looks like more of a kind of light beige. Some more 30 minute missions and this is some optional armor for the Rabiot. We actually get a variant of the Roy Roy which looks a bit spider like. That is what your Rabiot will look like equipped with this option armor and it is pretty cool. Some more effects, once again these are being shown with the 30 minute missions kits but they can be used with anything. These are the customized effects and this is a bunch of explosions and smoke in grey. This particular set is also available in orange and both the grey and the orange variants cost 550 yen. As for the premium Bandai in August, we've got quite a few awesome things coming out this month. First up is a new variant of the Master Grade Cubile Damned. This is the Cubile Amburiru. Amburil, I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it looks like it's in a pearlescent white mixed with those classic Cubile colors. So if you like your Gunpla both late UC and weird as hell, well there's the high grade Dictus. I don't even know what to say about this, it's awesome in its own right but this to me proves why uh, Gundam F91 and Crossbone shouldn't be canon Universal Century. Either way it is awesome but uh, it's a big old hand with an eyeball in it. Again awesome but that's Universal Century? <laughs> Speaking of Universal Century, we've got the P Bandai High Grade Jim Night Seeker, the High Grade Crossbone Gundam X1 Full Cloth, believe it or not another Master Grade Gundam Astray Red Frame, this time with a flight type unit. You can get this variant right here for 7150 yen which is the full kit and the flight type unit or you can just buy the flight unit for your Master Grade Gundam Astray Red Frame for 2200 yen. Now this right here I got a little bit shocked by, I think it is a bit of a letdown that this isn't going to be a full release kit. This is the new updated version of the high grade Rick Diaz which is based on the high grade build Gamma Gundam which was of course a premium Bandai kit but for such a important Zeta Gundam kit I'm surprised it didn't just go all out with this and make it a full release. Definitely a disappointment and a total missed opportunity. Moving now into September and probably the most unique release is well another Oryx 782. This is the new entry grade. So basically this is, so basically this is a high grade Oryx 782 based on the fine build system, aka what the Leo was like, the Maganac and the Wyndham. It's a certain style of joint but as well as being laid out in an easy to build way on the runner, having the fine build system joints etc in its build, it also does not require a nippers so I guess it's a good place to start if you just want to try out some Gunpla with zero tools and at 770 yen it's definitely a cheap starting point. And now on the complete other side of the high grade price spectrum of course is the high grade Boundock. I've talked about this before, it's big, it's awesome, it's Sega Gundam, 
and it's 5,500 yen. Next up, and we have still no images of this, this is a high-grade Bill Divers Rerise 4-pack of all the main suits in the final battle color. This is 8,250 yen, but it is 4 kits. Next up then, we've got the high-grade Bill Divers Rerise Tertium Gundam Arms. So that's just for using with that Gundam we saw before, and it's just a weapon kit. Next up in September, we've got a bunch of optional parts for using with the Cross Silhouette SD Gundams, the new version of Fumina, which is based on that new Gundam Girl frame, some more real great Evangelion awesomeness in Ava Unit 2, some optional weapons for your CL Nova 30 minute missions kits, these are big and these are pretty awesome, some more optional armor for on your Rabiot, and here are the P Bandai kits. I'm not going to go through all of these because these are quite off in the distance, we talked about some of these earlier on. And that, of course, is the high-grade Pluton Gundam, the HWS, that's the heavy weapon systems for the real-grade new Gundam. You can get that with the new Gundam or sold separately, the option parts for your Geminus, the high-grade Eldora Windham, and a color variant of the Master Grade Gym 2. The most notable releases in October are the Heavy Arms, which we saw already, that's 1,650 yen, the new version of the Estray No Name, that's 2,200 yen, and finally, all the way off in November, is the Master Grade Wing Gundam Zero EW Verka at 6,050 yen. So yeah, that is it for the video. That is all the news of everything that has been announced in the last couple of weeks, everything that is coming out all the way until November. And as usual, let me know down there in the comments, what is it that you saw in this video or what is it that's coming out that you're the most excited about? As always, thank you so much for watching. There's a link down there in the description if you want to get any of this stuff at Hobby Link Japan, remember 10% off with that discount code. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla news and reviews, and I'll see you next time.